Hey, welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Sword of the Stars 2. Going through my first, uh, first campaign as the Zul. Having a pretty good time tearing up space right now. So far, pretty peaceful. I kind of started to believe it's only been turned 16 so far, but so far, pretty peaceful levels of exploration here. But, uh, as you can see, that's gonna end pretty soon. There's four other species out here trying to colonize the stars. We're bound to have first contact encounter with one of them. And the thing I like about the Zul is our first, uh, first contact is pretty straightforward. We know what we want. That's what I like about the Zul. We're not complicated. Alright, so I remember what I left off doing. I know we got construction going off all across the Empire. I think I just started making the first combat-worthy fleet. Oh, I didn't name any of these. Is it too late? I guess so. Hold on a second, I gotta fix something. Alright, sorry for the jump. Um, back to this. I'm gonna name these ships real quick. Give them some nice, violent sounding names. Reserve, it was the command. Can I rename them after they've been made? I'm not sure. I don't think I can. Oh, yeah, you can get a quick look up what the ship are. You do that. Alright, money is starting to get a bit tighter, especially now that we're finally building our first battle capable fleet. Not that we have anywhere for it to go quite yet, but our empire is expanding. Let's go ahead and end turn and see what happens. System update. Arrived in its base in the theta system. Awesome. So let's see if there's any worlds I feel like colonizing just yet. Colony, colonies. Well, Bronze and Alpha has a pretty good world on it. And I don't have any world of Bronze, so that's probably my next pick. Yeah, let's go ahead and colonize the yet untouched Bronze and Alpha. It's a virgin world for us to take. Settle my own minions there, Lord. Your luck I have granted you minions. Alright, yeah, so I think we're about evening out on ship construction cost and projected savings. We're all still going down, but eh, what you gonna do? I could lower my taxes, but I'm kinda pinching every penny. Oh. Do I really? I'm glad that warning is in there. Because I am terrible. Construction fleets. Um, yeah, I definitely want to upgrade something. No, forget upgrading. Let's finally build a science station and help that. We'll do it right here. Build a new station. Get us a science station. And I haven't played a whole lot of Zul yet in Sword of the Stars 2, so I mean, I always confuse breeding and tribute stations. Tribute stations, I know, are really important for us for what we eventually end up doing with the level 5 one. Breeding, I think, are a form of, uh, trade. Gotta get our slaves from somewhere. Alright. Yeah, I forgot to put the mission in. Science station, construction fleet. Get to work. I will cut no quarters, Dominus. Then how will we get a station? Cut it out of something. Uh, 
A new place of research has been built, Lord. Excellent. Let's get that one up to stat as fast as possible. No, 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 I didn't mean to actually upgrade it. Upgrade it, I meant to go to Station Manager. There we go. Data Prime, Science Station. Just do all that. Now, an interesting thing about the Science Stations is... Um, basically, you get a bonus to the research in any of these tech trees for however many of these modules you have developed on the station. Uh, interesting thing that you can do, though, is that if you decide to only focus in one tree, as you see, I'd only pick one module at the level one. And as you keep upgrading the station to higher level science stations, you get access to build more and more particular module in here. I could spread them out, and then you get a nice even benefit across the entire empire, but it'd be kind of diluted. What I like doing with the uh, science stations is focusing on one tree per science station. And the uh, level, I think the highest level, or maybe the second highest level uh, science station can be specifically dedicated to that, and then you get an even bigger research boost to that particular tree. Um, and since I'm going to end up getting emitter technology after this, let's go ahead and try energy weapons. There we go, energy weapon. Oh, hey, that was the one it picked. I'm just going to go ahead and put two in there. I'm going to focus on energy weapons. There we go. Alright, and see, this it takes time to go through all that, so it'll be continually adding modules every turn. First survey fleet. First survey fleet has arrived. And send you out there. I'll use my fourth and final no tunnel. I will see what I can find, Great Father. Not that these are permanent. You got to keep that in mind. They will actually eventually collapse over time and with use. I don't know if I've said that yet. So if I want to, basically. Like thing I like about the node system is it's a bit counterintuitive, but it kind of manages itself. If you don't use a node line often enough, uh, sending down bore cruisers to bore it out, it'll collapse. So, if I'm not going to use a line, then it'll take care of itself. Two ships constructed in theta. System update. Oh, are you still really doing that? Which one are you supporting? Yamar one? Yeah, actually, yeah, keep supporting that. Let's give them a boost. They are a little expensive on my wall right now. Uh, I don't like that. it is, I'm tearing through my money as fast as humanly possible. Go ahead and take down security a notch. Now, whatever that line is, is the bare minimum to keep corruption from influencing. So this is going to, because I'm ignoring it for so long and adjusting my budget, going to creep back up on me. Just gotta pay attention to it. This is a warning point, that mor average, uh, average morale 7. Uh, for any other species. But for Zul, they're not gonna rebel. They know better than to question Grief Father. Let's go ahead and pick the next juicy looking world to take. 308,000. It's kind of expensive. Well, there might not be any more worlds for me to take. Alright, so they finished upgrading and he'll be back in theta soon. Yeah, just the construction fleet. I gotta get him to do something. the home naval station, but it's already a level 2. Yeah, go ahead and upgrade that one. 
for 70,000 credits. And I want to pump research back into those because I'm going to need some teeth on my ships. We have seized the planet, Lord. Excellent. Now burn it. You've made contact with Tachak the Honey Tongued. Um, is that Morgi? Morigi. Oh, I think that is. Awesome. We're making first contact with the mother. There's a race where females are basically considered a part of the male's body. It's not exactly a, uh, a compliment to call the, another species mother. We call them that because they were the first sentient species we snacked on and gained sentience from. Interesting thing, our, uh, the technology we use for boring our lines comes from the Morgi. They don't have that technology, but that's how we've reversed engineered their particular gravity drives. And I think I'm done with this turn. Treasury's going back up. Oh shit, now let's go ahead and put you guys into service. Slippery's not a bad one. Um, Inquisitor. Now let's have Inquisitor for one that has a bunch of boarding ships in it. Go ahead and pick Slippery. Get one of my older generals in there. Yeah. The Silent. First tactical fleet. And I could spend a lot more time on this, but there we go. Um, where are the supplies? Pretty spread out uh, formation, but they they can handle themselves. Let's get you out of it. And putting them out here doesn't mean they won't be in battle. Quite the opposite. When a fleet joins battle, unlike the Sword of the Stars one, all ships from the selected fleet are uh, going to show up. It's a pretty it's a tighter formation. Using all command points, so I couldn't sh put another fleet, uh, ship in that fleet even if I wanted to. Now without getting additional technologies that will increase my command influence. Completed a build order. Ashva the Killer. Man, he sounds like a menacing general. I need to get him. Yeah, we're not going to be intercepting them. We'll be meeting them at Unicron. Anyone inactive? You guys are. Yeah, let's go ahead and rebase you guys over here. A so, pity. I was starting to enjoy my current post. Yeah, you know the way, if you've noticed the way the mission system works is that they all have a home system, usually where the fleet itself is created. And that's that's their base. They return to there when they're done missions in order to resupply, restock, do everything that's ex uh, extracted into this game. So I want him to be able to make quicker strikes in here if necessary, so he's going to rebase the closest one I've got, which is here. It's actually getting an upgrade to its naval station, too. And I should make another fleet, but I would much rather get my HCA. 
And already corruption snuck up on me. That mouse freaked out on me. System update. Oh, that was a fast survey. I'm surprised we didn't have a fight there. Oh, that is a nice planet. I think I'll take it. Why didn't we fight you guys? Um, how badly? Oh, fine. I'll turn down our carbs for now. Try and keep the resources going for a little bit longer. I am surprised we didn't have a conflict with them. I imagine we will in the next turn, though. Good diplomacy menu. Now we don't know how to talk to them yet. We haven't researched the Xeno uh, linguistics. You got collapsed into one tech in this game. Um, with more uh, nuances to it. Drop tech fusion. They're neutral to us. Well, looks like we got enough to do something. No, right. Diplomacy has been interesting in this game. We got to build up these uh, diplomacy points, which we can use to do these actions to try and interact with uh, AI. Obviously, they don't mean much in multiplayer. Multiplayer, you gotta convince the human. Oh shit, can spend that in intel missions. I'm not at war with them, but we are in a neutral system. Let's see if we try and blow them out of the sky in the next turn. grinning at me. Prohibitive, can't settle on that one. Demand. That are simple for credits. You dare make demands of the Zool? I wonder how long, are they rebased yet? They have. How long can you last there? Travel time for the whole mission patrol. All right, so I'm gonna have them lock down that system. Yes, Lord. I will stand watch over your stars. And this is one of the things that's really I want to point out there. You notice that that mission was to go here and basically stay put at Unicron and patrol it. I want them to lock down that system because I plan on putting a colony there and branching further and closer into uh, to the bird space. However, they can only stay there for 10 turns. This is one of the great things. It's, uh... I don't know what the... I don't know why the word's slipping my head and extrapolated, but... The supply, the importance of logistics here is that... Why they have three supply ships and trying to maintain the, cons the, uh, the consumption that all the warships in this fleet take be smaller on the supply means they can do longer missions last longer. So even if I could build a stronger, better warship, it probably would consume resources heavier if I wasn't careful, and it wouldn't be able to last as long in a fight. Which I think is a really interesting choice you have to make when you design your ships and, you d and designing your fleets. It comes into play on a lot of different levels, and again, uh, is strongly varied by race. Any free colony ships? I don't think I do. What are all you colonies doing? Uh, all those with the colonizer in it? No. Bronson Alpha, 55 turns. Really? What are you guys doing? Alright, we're 
just gonna keep standing it. down now. I'll return to Theta and then I'll send off the Unicron next turn. And oh man, I'm starting to hit the red. See, we can hit red and we just start building up a debt which has to be paid off every turn, which you know compounds being this far behind. Uh, I don't particularly like going red. I definitely did do it in Sword of the Stars 1. Sword of the Stars 2 makes me feel like I have to more often, but I'm going to try to avoid that. So as much as I really want those lasers. Let's tone this down. I hope we can build it back up. Yeah. System update. Excellent. Go colonize Unicron. Which one was cheaper? Oh man, that is almost a gem world. I mean, resources could be a bit higher, but barely costs anything to settle it. And the best part of being yes, Zul. Dominus. I will round up anyone who looks idle. Then I can't recall if I've mentioned this before, is that we don't care what our planet looks like. We are extremely hardy, we're resistant to alien viruses pretty heavily. I think we're immune to bioweapons, we were in Sword of the Stars 1 at least. Uh, almost every bioweapon anyways. So, we can settle anything. As far as other species are concerned, we're not picky about what we destroy when we settle it, so all these kind of things go in that we have a very acceptable range of hazards that we can settle. And we're climbing, yeah, climbing our way out of the uh, red very slowly. Yeah, don't care. Update. And this may be an entirely chance that they don't like these planets and they don't want to fight for it anyways, but I'm just going to make sure I lock it down. And I think my only other inactive ship right now is the construction fleet, which can bite me. Because I don't have any money to give it. Actually, I may make sure that I... Yeah, just the construction fleet. Excellent. Alright, and the distance is too great for a fleet from Theta to get there. And it's a pretty long node line here, too. So I'm going to have them rebrace to Yamar, where hopefully they'll have enough supply to start exploring deeper into the bird space. Load the women into the ships, you maggots. We're leaving. Oh, shit. Man, all my construction fleets are idle. But we're finally breaking even on our money. We do end up fighting some of these guys. Let's build a fleet that is obsessed with boarding. That's what the zealots are for. And put some violences in there. I don't think I've mentioned Construction it actually. Order placed, Dominus. And then you may have noticed is that the boar ships have a different speed, uh, galactic speed, than my normal ships. And that is because it takes longer for them to bore a line than it takes for us to travel down it normally. 
So all these fleets that do not have warships in them are going to zoom down these lines super fast. System updates. Okay, they're three turns away from getting the Unicron. How many turns are they away from? Yeah, they still got ten turns left. I think eight of that's patrolling and then another two to get back to their base in Yamar. Second survey fleet's done. Well, I'm not going to care if they're not up. Oh, they're up. Okay, you can stop over harvesting now. See, they've got enough supply to make that jump pretty easily. Yeah, let's do it. Excellent. Let us see which worlds are ripe. Alright, I think Unicron had a second world. Which was also really cheap, so we're just gonna colonize the crap out of this one. Settle my own minions there, Lord. Go ahead and relocate another. Move the construction fleet here. I will shift operations to the new base, Lord. So that as soon as we get a colony in Unicron, I can get a naval station there and make it much easier to dig in and defend it. And where's my other survey fleet? I need to get. I need to explore down these trails again. First survey fleet over there. Third survey fleet. Data. No, well, that picked up that they got a mission yet. That's sad. What are you guys up to? A new land is conquered, Dominus. Excellent. It barely cost me anything, and I don't care. Because we're still going to tear that up. Excellent. So now, hopefully, they have the range to go survey one of these. Do I survey the Star of St. Cuthbert? Or Marklar the Marklar? It's got two, but this one has an asteroid field, so if I want it, I can't reach it. Go ahead and serve it from there. You will have your map, Lord. Alright, so this Yamar Unicron node lane is pretty important to me. That's what gets me into the bird space. And here's an interesting thing, we can actually go to provinces. Alright, so that's my only province in all ton of these are outside. Pretty much every new colony exists outside the initial province. Uh, let's go to terrain. Alright, Sector Delta is where the birds are. We're kind of between Sector Delta and the Armline. You see, this is a really neat feature, I think, because you get all this... You can more easily name and describe locations in the 3D space. Move back to normal view for now. Thank <laughs> you. 
Bronson Alpha 1 is being over harvested. Yeah, and I'm gonna keep having them over harvest until they are done. I wanna hear about those maggots complaints that I'm burning their world. Probably should have gone ahead and built the station here. Yeah, you know, let's not have second search. Let's do that first. They're closer. I, mean, I will see to the work personally. I mean, they don't have enough people here, but once I can build a second station, I may even want to tribute our breeding station here. Help distribute all the slaves I'll be taking from these birds. Turns the five turns. System updates. Next second construction fleet's in the middle of nowhere. Go ahead and move there. Yes, great father. We will relocate. Ooh, that looks like a nice system. I will shift operations to the new base, Lord. We have seized the planet, Lord. Excellent. Unicron belongs to the Zool. I just relocated that from Starhaven. Totally gonna have to go back and build another station in Starhaven. Oh well. Foresight. I will cut no corners, Dominus. Planning. What are those? This one an inquisitor. what it's doing here. I want to be a lot closer. Their whole point is to have the teeth that get in there. 
to board and conquer a ship and then have the ability to fight off anything that's still alive. As you can see, I got 54 command points. Uh, each ship is basically three. Um, they're one cruiser equivalent. These are measured in CP. Uh, command points are three per cruiser. Except we're Zul, so we're slightly different in that. Endurance 4, speed, and no destination. Excellent. And I don't really have any use for them just yet, so I'm going to leave them where they are. And hope we get this soon. Actually, what fleets do I have that are inactive? Uh, the, yeah, the boarding fleet. That's going to be like that for a while. The new Inquisition is complete, Dominus. A small kennel for your Warhounds, Lord. The Enigma is solved, Dominus. Excellent. Fleet survey fleet owned by Tot Honey Tongue is incoming to Yamar. Yamar, you cocksucker. All right. Colonize patrol. Got boarding fleet there. Travel time four turns. Really? As you command, Dominus. I am on guard. How long are they gonna get there? Excellent. Let us see which worlds are ripe. Alright, and now we have some new choices to make before I end this episode. First things first, what's our next technology gonna be? A lot of choices I really want to get into. New power technology would be nice for the... A lot of reasons, actually. I'm gonna need point defense. Oh, I'm fighting the birds. A good question, Dominus. Perhaps it can be done. Yeah, if I'm gonna be fighting the Morrigan, I kinda want this. Because this could lead to point defense weapons. And the Morrigan like their drones. My other choices probably would have been Magnus Ceramic Lattices. Our ships are kind of uh, not so sturdy. We're not exactly shipwrights. We make other people's shipwrights work for us. Either literally, or we take their ships. And then make them our own. Go ahead and start upgrading the Star Haven station. It's giving it psionic technology. You know, I'm going to go ahead and agree with that. I'm going to give it psionic. Because eventually I'm going to start researching down that line. least we have a new toy so let's try and implement that new toy we unlock the battle bridge a new command section which has our wonderful new heavy combat beam on it we also unlocked our 
laser section, which has three of them on there. Um, man, our energy costs are going to go through the roof. Can I do this? Barely. This ship's gonna have some energy problems. I think we're just going to have to accept that that's how we live. kill me more than anything else does. Three beamers? Yeah, they bring us down. So this is a sh four. I'm sorry, I miscounted. A grand total of five uh, heavy combat lasers. I know you haven't seen them in a fight yet, but you're about to. Missiles for anything closing on it, and if they dare get close, we're just gonna moiterize them. And because I like stupidly expensive ships, let's make sure it's armored before I make that mistake. I haven't even thought of a design for this. I'll come up with a better one than that. I'm not sure. The plans will serve us well, and this, is, this one is purple, so we're gonna, Because we made all of our ships on design turn one, uh, we didn't have to deal with the prototype, but now we have to start dealing with getting prototypes into place. So the first time I build this ship, it's gonna be really expensive. You can see down here, um, it says this is the prototype cost, this will be once we get a production line set up. It is significantly more to build the first one. And then we start learning about how the design actually works. Once it sees combat, there could be quirks in the design that we're not aware of. Could be positive, could be negative. We won't know until it's been combat tested. So lots of interesting things to learn about. to build the first. Oh, hey, he even told me that. Awesome. Alright, on that note, we will see you for the next episode.